we want to remind you too, when we're talking about resilience, sometimes when we're going through things and there's sometimes this expectation, we just need to bounce back um, and somehow push through. Um, some of us may have learned some of those mantras growing up and think even culturally, we might have, may have learned to just kind of press on and deal with it. Uh, maybe because some of the generations that came before us may have felt that they had it harder and rightfully so as our ancestors did. When we think of resilience, it's just calling it out. It's naming it. It's allowing ourselves to feel things. When I feel my role as a therapist and I'm working with my amazing students, I'm wanting them to just name it. Sometimes they can't name it because sometimes we've learned over time, I need to just push through and it's gonna get better. And then we behaviorally just kind of activate ourselves and get busy with things. But oftentimes we're not acknowledging that pain, that hurt. And then sometimes that waxing and waning numbness, like sometimes we just don't feel anything and it's hard to feel because it's been hurting so badly. And so we encourage you to think of resilience as that space of strength for you to honor what you're feeling, to acknowledge it, to give it voice. And so I love this quote, resilience is very different than being numb. Resilience means you experience, you feel, you fail, you hurt, you fall, but you keep going. So next slide. So some highlights of resilience. Yeah, if it was easy just to bounce back, I think we would. Some of us have other circumstances, context, um, other uh, traumas that we've experienced throughout our life that we're still navigating. And so resilience, we think of, we don't want to encourage support. Now, the primary factor in resilience is having a caring and supportive relationships. Not all folks have that access. Not all people have that connection. Uh, sometimes it can feel like a privilege when you see other people have the two parents or two caregivers and multiple siblings and just a, a field of supporters and others, you know, don't have that. But we can create, we can curate that support system. Uh, relationships can create the love and the trust that we need. So when we're navigating pain and navigating the hurt and the traumas that we've experienced, that will ground us. Those people can help us pull us out. So I think of Dr. Manessi and other mentors I've had when I was going through grad school and some of the things that I felt that was oppressive, I felt like I could be myself and just unpack with them and still feel that it was navigating my goals. So other factors associated with resilience is those plans like all of us have different goals in our lives personal or professional how are we carrying them out how are we holding ourselves accountable but sometimes it's the support system that helps us with that we're not feeling at our at our best a positive view of ourself is key so of course as a psychologist we want positive and affirming self-talk not so easy for everybody um, it's easy to say just be positive however it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of um, intentionality every day to acknowledge who we are, to acknowledge our strengths and our gifts and who we are as people, and know that we all have divine plans for ourselves. And so that kind of goes to the skills and communication, um, learning a lot when I went through grad school and then as a psychologist that some of these things I didn't really know until I was really learning them. And so learning the art of saying no, when we're feeling we're really packed, but we feel the pressures that no, I need to because these are the expectations. And so if you're a person of color in particular and you feel you're caring a bit more because maybe you're the only person on staff, maybe the only person um, in your class that looks like you, that reflects where you come from, it may feel like you can't say no. Um, and so it's learning how to communicate what your needs are and acknowledging them first. Um, and the capacity to manage strong feelings and impulses. This is really reflective of over time, if we're not acknowledging our feelings, has anyone in this space ever had that feeling where it's bubbling up and then it kind of just gives you this low tolerance for, for folks or people or emotions, right? So it's learning how to manage the strong emotions, naming them, and if you don't name them, finding new ways to channel them so they're, they're acknowledged.